Welcome once again to Lato's Law. Here's Steve Lato. I mentioned a couple days ago that the courts had reacted to things in the news and um, they had simply stepped up their security and said things such as, when you go through security, we're going to ask you some extra questions, like an extra layer of screening. But they were still planning on conducting business as usual. Well, that was last week. This is this week. And as you know, due to events in the news, uh, a lot of states are doing things such as like closing bars and restaurants, telling people not to gather in groups of more than 10 or 50, depending on the setting. And so I was saying that one of the problems that courts have is there's certain things that courts do that are time sensitive. And you might say, well, but Steve, can't the court just change its own rules and make up its own things? Isn't that what judges do all day long? <laughs> well, in some respects, yes. But <clears throat> there are some settings where they can't. So for instance, to give you an example, if you are charged with a crime in some states, there are strict guidelines and deadlines that say that if you are charged here, you must be arraigned here and you're entitled to a speedy trial. And so if you don't waive the speedy trial, some jurisdictions have rules on what a speedy trial is. So some of those deadlines are hard deadlines. So I was curious to know if the courts were going to do anything beyond the extra screening because there are some things they can do, but the question is, would they do it? And of course, the answer is yes, they did. So yesterday, I got a, a flurry of emails, as I always do, including several from local courts. Now, I mentioned before the federal courts were the ones that had sent me the notices about the stepped up security due to recent news events. But uh, I mentioned that I practiced more in state courts, especially Third Circuit, which is Wayne County, which is where Detroit is, and Oakland County, which is the county which I grew up, which is a county directly north of, of Wayne County. And that, of course, is the Sixth Circuit Court, uh, Judicial Circuit in the state of Michigan. So the two notices I got yesterday I'll read you the first one from the third. I'll get you the highlights. It says, Third Circuit Court State of Emergency. This is from Timothy Kenny, the chief judge. And it says, The chief judge acting pursuant to the Michigan court rules. And they cite a couple of them here. And one thing I, I have to tell people all the time is, there's a lot of times that judges are given discretion in how they operate their courtrooms, how they operate their trials. And so those rules they have are all found in the Michigan court rules. And so the court rules actually allow for the chief judge in any given circuit to issue its rules as to how it administers its court. So the chief judge is acting pursuant to that, and he says, recognizing the states of emergency declared by the president and the governor, hereby orders that the third judicial circuit of Michigan, the third circuit court, shall remain open to address the following essential operations. So he's decided to tell you, look, here's what we're going to be open for. Everything else? No. So... Felony criminal matters heard at the Frank Murphy Hall of Justice. The court shall hear arraignments on the information for incarcerated defendants. So a defendant is incarcerated, the arraignment's going to take place. Like I said, and that's one of the time-sensitive deadlines. Court will also hear emergency bond motions. So uh, there's a bond motion and it's an emergency, they'll hear that too. The court shall hear proceedings related to the arraignments on bench warrants uh, and of probationers arrested on warrants for violations of probation. The court shall hear trials for incarcerated defendants only. So if someone is out on bail waiting for trial, they're going to say, look, you can just keep waiting. Congratulations. <laughs> you, got, you got a break here for a little while. But if you're incarcerated, presumably you want to go to trial. So they're going to bring you to trial. The court shall hear scheduled sentencings for incarcerated defendants. Again, if you're out on bail awaiting sentencing, sit it out. But if you're incarcerated, so they're going to do this. And by the way, this is interesting because this is going to help hopefully get some of the people out of jail. Uh, juvenile proceedings heard at the Lincoln Hall of Justice or the juvenile detention facility. The court shall hear emergency proceedings for abuse and neglect cases. The court shall hear preliminary hearings, scheduled trials, and disposition hearing for detained youth. Again, the same justification here. If they're being held, we'll hold the hearing to see if we can't figure out a way to get them out of here. The court shall hear waiver hearings for youth to be charged as or with the rights attributed to an adult. And then, of course, we get to the things that are generally heard in civ uh, circuit court. Domestic relations proceedings. Cases heard at either the Coleman A. Young Municipal Center or the Penobscot Building. The initiation of personal protection orders will still be heard, and those are considered to be an important thing. 
hearings on denied PPOs. You applied for PPO, it got denied. You want a hearing on that? They'll still hear that. Arraignments on alleged violations of PPOs. Hearings for PPO respondents not able to make bail following an arraignment. And again, that parallels the other stuff we talked about. Parental waivers. Approving and or hearing emergency hearings as are deemed necessary by the sitting emergency judge. So there will be an emergency judge to hear emergency hearings. And the signing or preparing of any emergency orders necessary for the safety and well-being of a litigant or child at the discretion of the emergency judge. Meanwhile, at the main courthouse, this is just all building up to where I spend a lot of my time with my cases, civil proceedings heard at the Coleman A. Young Municipal Center, requests for emergency, show cause, and injunctive orders, and business court emergencies. That's it. It's regular trials. You're waiting. Status conferences. Forget about it. <laughs> Pre-trial conferences, you're dreaming. The chief judge will continue to hear all infectious disease cases brought by the Wayne County or City of Health, Detroit Health Departments. The court further orders that all operations not outlined above shall be suspended until Monday, March 30th. It is in the interest of public health. The public is encouraged not to attend court proceedings unless necessary. It is so ordered, and that is in all caps. It is often is signed by the Honorable Timothy M. McKenney, Chief Judge, the Third Judicial Circuit Court of Michigan, dated yesterday. So that's the Third Judicial Circuit Court responding to events in the news. And the Sixth Circuit issued a similar one, and I'll go through this because it's very, very similar. Circuit Court, County of Oakland, 1200 North Telegraph Road, Department 404, Pontiac, Michigan, Shalina Kumar, Chief Judge, Sixth Judicial Circuit Court, State of emergency procedures due to events in the news. This order of the 6th Judicial Circuit Court is issued in response to events in the news, outbreak, and the resulting states of emergency declarations issued by the President and the Governor. The order is issued to implement emergency procedures to reduce the risk of events in the news spreading and to protect the health and safety of the public and to all who conduct business in the Circuit Court. And then it lists things. It says the 6th Judicial Circuit Court will remain open to handle only essential operations as follows. It says criminal cases, and again, it's very, very similar to Wayne County, such as arraignments, uh, but if they can be done by mail, they'll do those. Uh, Emergency bond motions, arraignments on bench warrants, uh, all criminal jury trials scheduled for the next 30 days adjourned. Now, criminal jury trials in progress will continue. And I know some people are going to say, Steve, why? Well, the reason is this. Once you've got a jury impaneled, and a case begins, if you stop that trial and anything happens, you run into the risk of the defendant being able to claim double jeopardy. You, you, you send everybody home, whatever, and one of the jurors gets sick and dies, gets hit in a car, in a car accident and dies. Uh, something, you know, so, so it's extremely important that once the case is proceeding to keep it proceeding. So j- criminal jury trials in progress will continue. Uh, all criminal calls, which is anything having to do with the cases other than trials, through March 31st, are adjourned. Sentencing hearings for in-custody defendants will be held but by video, unless objected to by the defense. In that case, they may be adjourned. Adjourned. So take your, take your, take your pick. You can do it by video or you can adjourn it. Uh, juvenile cases, again, very, very similar to what Wayne, uh, Wayne County is doing. Domestic relation uh, they'll hear the cases as long as there's an immediate threat of harm to the children. Uh, but otherwise, all cases adjourned to March 31st. Emergency motions may be heard by telephone when possible. Uh, the friend of the court matters. Many of them are adjourned, but the important stuff like bench warrants will continue. Uh, referee hearings will be adjourned when possible or conducted by telephone when necessary. Meanwhile, the friend of the court payment window will remain open. So if you got to make payments to the friend of the court... That's not adjourned, my friend. Uh, Personal protection orders, again, very, very similar to how they're going to try to allow that process to continue working. Meanwhile, for the civil cases, the actual lawsuits, requests for emergency show cause and injunctive orders will be reviewed by the assigned judge or the judge on call. Business court emergencies will be reviewed by the assigned judge or the judge on call. And civil jury and bench trials will be adjourned for 30 days or until further notice by the court. No in-person civil motion calls will be conducted through March 31st. Motions may be filed and heard via telephone at the discretion of the court. So if you and your opponent get together and say, hey, look, we got an emergency thing here. Let's, let's ask the court to hear it. The court might hear it, but they don't have to. 
Case evaluation hearings scheduled to be heard in the next 30 days will be adjourned until further notice by the court. Meanwhile, the other stuff will be heard, uh, like I said, emergency stuff and so on. Um, questions about the status of specific cases must be directed to the assigned judges' chambers. It is so ordered, all caps. Shalina D. Kumar, Chief Circuit Judge. And this one is dated yesterday. So, like I said, courts around the state and probably around the nation are stepping up what they are doing, and that is they are doing less. They are going to stop doing non-essential stuff, basically. They'll continue doing the emergency stuff and the stuff where people's you know, massive, major, substantive rights are at stake. You're incarcerated, and you need to have a bond hearing. That bond hearing will probably still take place. But you're out on bail awaiting trial. Your trial might take a little while longer than you expected. Sorry, it happens. Due to events in the news. So there you go. Uh, I will update you, but I wanted to update some, update this in particular because last week I did a thing about how the courts were responding to events in the news. And as of then, I thought, you know, they can't shut down completely, but it didn't seem like they were doing that much. And now they are. So it appears they've taken very, very substantive steps in the right directions. So there you go. And once again, I've got to mention, if I don't, people ask, subconjunctival hemorrhage in the left eye. Uh, it's basically like a bruise to the eye. Don't feel it. I can't see it unless I look in a mirror. Doesn't hurt. It's getting better. <laughs> it's not contagious and it is not related to events in the news. Questions, comments, put them below. Let's talk to you later. Bye bye. Thank you for watching Lato's Law. Take me to the captain and tell him why I'm here. I want to stay in your world while my world disappears.